December 2nd, 2017 was an extraordinary night. It was our 20th anniversary dinner. People were happy, they were celebrating, and they left that event really inspired by the knowledge that this work was making an impact on the lives of thousands in our neighborhoods. The intersection of North Avenue and Harlem Saturday night, witnesses say someone fired at least eight rounds into an SUV stopped at a red light, killing a 23-year-old man and injuring his female passenger. That night, Rami got a call from Billy telling him that Stephen had been shot. It was almost too <clears throat> surreal for me to hear this information because it was only maybe four months that I got that same type of information about my own son. You know, he was only two years younger than my son. He was the first guy that I recruited into the program. So, you know, it was like losing my son all over again. I was living a life of, of destruction. I was born in the wrong way, and I'm young. I'm 23 years old. I've been shot multiple times. I did five years in jail, so I didn't know nothing outside of that. So if I didn't have them calling me every day and, and letting me know that it's, it's gonna be all right, you know, it's a lot you can take from this program. Those of us who are blessed to know Stephen in a short period of his life met a remarkable man a brother that goes way beyond what they tried to describe in the media. The day after Stephen was killed, every major newspaper said virtually the same thing. Chicago, deadly gun violence. Another black kid killed in a gang-related homicide in Chicago. All of his brothers in the program said, no way. Stephen was much, much more than that. We made an utter commitment, a solemn pledge, that we are going to defy we are going to resist, and we are going to categorically reject what they want to say about Stephen. The first day of the program, Stephen called me. He was outside because he was late, and I was asking him why was he late. He was like, man, I got shot yesterday. And when he got up there limping, I was like, you know, bro, you need to, you know, go back to the hospital or something before you catch an infection. And he was just so worried about losing his position in the program. The program that Stephen was a part of now has an eight year legacy, anchored by the idea that the people in our neighborhoods hold the key to building up our neighborhoods and improving the quality of life on those blocks one house at a time. What moved Steven and all of the guys in the program is that they're not just building homes, they're part of this transformative model that's changing lives and transforming entire neighborhoods. And the thing about the Green Green Tree program is that you're not just learning a valuable trade and construction, you're part of everything. The food justice work, the arts and culture workshops, the behavioral health therapy, you're working in the ceramic studio, you're sitting in on organizing forums, you're going down to your state capitol and learning how to advocate for legislation. What Stephen was a part of and what all our brothers in Green Tree are a part of is being genuinely invested in improving the condition of their neighborhoods. All of our young men are special to us. You know, when we come in on Monday mornings, it's a good feeling in my heart to see all those guys present. And even though we on the street, this is not the block. You feel me? I gotta realize that I can't talk to y'all like y'all, like everybody a killer. When I go outside, I got a, I got a persona I got to put on. I think this what really like drew him more to this program because there was a lot of people here that been through things that he done been through. One of the things the Green Unity Brothers were committed to was making sure that Stephen's legacy went far beyond some makeshift memorial on the side of the road.
see the pride on the faces of those men as they showed people around the house they had built. That's the legacy Stephen was a part of. He was showing up every day, and when he showed up, he showed out. It's a lot you can take from this program. Like, I even stay in the house now even more. I don't even go outside a lot no more because I know I got to get up because they be on us. <laughs> don't be late. So I'm glad we had the opportunity to give him a chance to change, an avenue to go in a different direction. This work is very important because I want to reduce that, that pain that this city has been plagued with. We lost Stephen, you know, but I still got responsibilities to these other men to try to make sure that we still give them the opportunity that they need to change. This year we had 187 people on our waiting list for the Green Entry Program, and that was with zero advertisement. How many of the 2,619 people who were shot in Chicago this year were just waiting for an opportunity like this? That's the key right there being able to expand the opportunity of change for everybody, not just the individual, but the community. Impact the block, impact the city. And that way we can ensure that these guys have an opportunity to live in peace. He loved everybody out here. He talked about them more than he actually talked about his real family. Like, the people here was his family. What if we carried that sense of family everywhere? What if we thought about the thousands of people at the border or the millions of people struggling for decent health care or the countless black and brown men and women languishing in prisons all over the country as family? There have been centuries of injustice and systemic oppression that have eviscerated the lives and the communities of black and brown people, and that's not going to be fixed overnight. But we know what works, and it's models like Iman.